out of that big three out of those five to just be popular people. You know, in, and yet ones you wouldn't put on there. Yeah. <coughs> If you find out in the finish, there's no reason why the group can't go back and reassess. I know there's been examples of where, you know, perhaps it was picked a little bit along favouritism and mates' lines, although I, I trust the players that they're better than that usually. But if it happens, usually then what will happen is that leadership group won't be as good as it could be, and there'll be a trigger point where you come back and address that. And we have had that happen in some situations where it might be six months in, you reassess the leadership group and a couple of people who just wanted to be there because it was a nice place to be, they get removed and two bona fide leaders come in to replace them. And that's early days. A really good example to me, early days at the Swans was when Barry Hall wasn't selected. The players gave him feedback about the sorts of things they felt he could do to improve his leadership and he went away and did it. And I would say he's, he's a highly respected leader now. But he, it, 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 he wasn't in the leadership group initially. What he, what he did was work hard to develop the behaviours and the skills needed to, to, to make the fit. But I think that there, there's no rules around coming back and saying, let's reassess. I wouldn't do it every week, but you know, if you're six months in and there's a bit, of, a bit of angst about some of the leadership group, it's okay to say, okay, let's have a look at the leadership group again. We've had some experience, let's, let's reassess. And we've certainly chopped and changed a few over the journey. Now you talk about uh, dealing with people on an individual basis mm -hmm. and, and trying to take each um, circumstance on its merit. Yep. Find it difficult when you then try to you break your parameters of what you set for your team. Mm -hmm. So you know, everyone's expected to be at training if there's different reasons and it becomes difficult when you look at different backgrounds and different cultures and all those different things that test us all in admin and coaching now. Yes. If you set it aside because he might come from a certain different background or a cultural belief, you say, mate, it's fair enough to miss training or you can go away for a week and deal with things, whether it be a grievance, whatever. Yeah. I yeah, find so, that the difference. Yeah, no, and, and I'd, I'd want to make this point clear. I take, you, I take your point, but when we sign off on those core ones, they're core. And then it comes to when, as we, as we administer them, we start to deal with the issue of trust. Uh, and then you start to, if you've got someone who, you know, has gone to their, like, has, seems to be making excuses which are, the group don't trust, then they'll handle that situation much more differently than what they might someone who's earned their trust and respect. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, an example for me when um, the, the Swans captain in the first few years I was there was having, you know, some family difficulties and that. And, and, and he had his family relocate to Melbourne. <clears throat> the really interesting part was the players trusted enough that he could break his week up to manage what he needed to do because he earned that trust and respect. It, there could have been others where they'd say, not on your nelly. <coughs> so that's, it's being open about that. 